The Supreme Court ruled that South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham must testify in front of a grand jury as part of an investigation into Donald Trump's attempt to steal votes in Georgia after the 2020 election. And yet, pro-Trump election deniers remain undeterred as the midterms approach. My Pillow CEO Mike Lindell even claimed he had access to voting machines to detect fraud. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. You may recall that as part of the GOP attempt to overthrow the election results in 2020, Donald Trump called Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to magically find enough votes to overturn the results in a now infamous phone call. In his own separate call with Raffensperger, Graham asked him if he had the power to throw out legally cast ballots. At the time when the call was first reported, Graham described it as an innocent conversation and said he was just curious about how mail voting works in Georgia. What I'm very concerned about is that if you're gonna to continue to vote by mail, that we need to know what systems work and what don't. It's up to the people of Georgia. And I think I have every right in the world to reach out and say, how does it work? That's right, he was just curious about how mail voting works. So instead of Googling it or hopping on a bike and pedaling down to the town library, he decided to call an election official right as the president he supported was in the midst of orchestrating a coup to stay in power. It's just an innocent coincidence. <laughs> it's like how when I want to check if my internet is working, I'll Google, is it bad that I put my kid's college fund into Bitcoin? <laughs> it's a test. I didn't actually do it, honey. And also, if I did, markets are fluid, so. Graham makes it sound like he hosts one of those podcasts like Radio Lab or Stuff You Should Know where they investigate everyday mysteries. On today's episode of Telegram, we investigate mail-in voting. But first, this episode is brought to you by MailChimp, which is what my Mima used to tell me I was gonna be when I grew up. <laughs> she said, you ain't never gonna be a senator. You could be working at the post office as a MailChimp. And I said, that's not even a job, Mima." She said, well, they're gonna make an exception for you. And I yell, why don't you stop putting your carpal tunnel sleeve in the dishwasher? <laughs> well, anyway, if the explanation was as innocent as Graham made it sound, then you'd think he'd have no problem explaining that to the Fulton County DA's office, which is investigating attempts to interfere in Georgia's election and subpoenaed Graham as part of that investigation. Graham sued to block the DA's request for testimony and took his case all the way to the Supreme Court, which yesterday denied Graham's bid to block the subpoena. This just in, uh, the Supreme Court rejected Senator Lindsey Graham's attempt to block the subpoena, forcing him to testify in the 2020 election investigation in Georgia. A district attorney in Georgia had wanted Senator Graham to appear to give his testimony for that grand jury November 17th. Now the Supreme Court is saying, you know, we are not gonna get you out of that. Damn, he couldn't even get his bro Brett Kavanaugh to help him out. You guys. Remember the Sneer Brothers? <laughs> that picture reminds me of knocking on the screen door at my aunt's house and getting growled at by her two chihuahuas while she took forever to let me in. <laughs> Looked like a couple of actors auditioning for the role of a principal in a gritty Ferris Bueller reboot where the principal tries to murder Ferris. <laughs> You've stolen your last Ferrari, Bueller. And then Ferris would say something like, you think you can kill me and get away with it? And the principal would be like, I have two words for you, Bueller. We're referencing the movies Kids Watch. <laughs> Look for that gritty reboot next year on Paramount Minus. <laughs> so Graham will have to testify to a grand jury about his attempts to help Donald Trump overturn the 2020 election, and yet none of this seems to be having any effect on Republican candidates and officials. They aren't deterred by investigations into 2020. Hundreds of Republicans on midterm ballots across the country, including candidates for governor, in key swing states like Arizona and Pennsylvania continue to insist the 2020 election was stolen from Trump. And if they win, they've made it very clear that they will do everything in their power to rig future elections to prevent Democrats from winning. In fact, many, including Trump himself, are already preparing to claim next week's midterms are rigged if they lose. Rolling Stone has already reported that Trump himself plans to challenge the 2022 election. The recent month, Trump has convened a series of in-person meetings and conference calls to discuss laying the groundwork to challenge the 2022 midterm election results. They've gamed out scenarios for how to aggressively challenge elections, particularly ones in which a winner is not declared on election night. If there's any hint of doubt about the winners, the teams plan to wage aggressive court campaigns and launch a media blitz. Oh, is Donald Trump planning a media blitz? His whole life has been a media blitz. Without the media, he'd be selling illegal cigarettes out of the back of a queen's bowling alley. 
How would a media blitz look any different from his current strategy of appearing on literally any right-wing TV network or podcast as long as it has the words real, patriot, or America in it? This is a man who, let's not forget, basically had a standing invitation to call into Fox and Friends on a regular basis and ramble uninterrupted for over an hour while <laughs> the host just sat there on the couch without moving like out-of-town tourists who accidentally wandered into a 1970s porn theater in Times Square. <laughs> when they said, Peep show, I thought they meant the Easter candy. <laughs> I will say, Kilmeade in particular looks like a guy who wandered into a peep show thinking he was gonna get <laughs> some free marshmallow candies. Hello? Does anyone work here? Oh, good, the curtain's coming up. Hello, ma'am, I'm looking for some candied chickens. Ma'am, can you not hear me through the glass? Oh my goodness, don't take your clothes off. <laughs> Just this week, Trump called into some random right-wing podcast to repeat some absolutely deranged and completely debunked conspiracy theories about the horrific attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi. It's uh, weird things going on in that household in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I probably you and I are better not talking about it, because, <laughs> but the glass, it seems, was broken from the inside to the out. And, you know, that was, so it wasn't a break in, it was a break out. I don't know, you know, you hear the same things I do. Yeah, the 9-11 the, uh, the tape seems to suggest that, uh, they, that he knew the identity of the guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of bad stuff. I'm not a fan of Nancy Pelosi, but what's going on there is very sad. No big deal, everybody. Just the former president of the United States saying weird things have been going on in the Pelosi household for the last couple of weeks, which I guess he knows because what? He's the f***ing watcher? <laughs> you know, it takes a real sack of to start gaming out a way you can make an 82-year-old attempted murder victim the bad guy. <laughs> Trump just makes up and spreads it through vague, mafia-style innuendo like he's in a deleted scene from The Sopranos. He's very sad what's going on over at the place. <laughs> over at the place by the thing with our friend. <laughs> and, you know, as bad as it is, sometimes, you know, I will admit I have the urge to fight fire with fire and do the same thing to Trump. You know, just spread some completely made-up accusation about him, like, uh, you know, I don't know, you didn't hear it from me, but there's some very weird things going on in Trump's household. Like... <laughs> I hear his head is shrinking. He hides it. <laughs> he hides it when he goes out in public by wearing a giant fake head on top of his real tiny head. And look, I'm no fan of Trump, but it's very, it's very sad. It's very sad what's happening. I mean, you see the same pictures I see. Doctors, I guess they have to fill his head up with helium before every speech to make it look normal, and that's why his voice gets really high sometimes, you know, like this. You never stop fighting for America, and I will never, ever stop fighting for you. It's very sad. It's very sad, it's very weird. And you guys, this has been Seth Spreads, a baseless rumor about Donald Trump. <laughs> anyway. The point is Trump and his movement, which now includes Republicans running in close races across the country this year, are preparing to steal both the upcoming midterm elections and eventually, if they regain power, the presidential election in 2024. In Arizona, armed right-wingers inspired by the lies of Arizona's Republican candidates for Governor Kerry Lake and Secretary of State Mark Fincham have been loitering near early voting drop boxes to intimidate those voters. And the New York Times just reported that MyPillow CEO, Mike Lindell, whose phone was recently seized in a Hardee's drive through by the FBI, <laughs> as part of an investigation into an illegal voting machine breach by a pro-Trump county clerk in Colorado is actually using his business to fuel the election denial movement. He's the single largest advertiser on Fox News. He finances a large network of right-wing media outlets, and he spent as much as $40 million on conferences, activist networks, a digital media platform, legal battles, and researchers that promote his theory. I'm honestly shocked. He even has $40 million to throw around a bull like this. Did nobody have a pillow before he showed up? <laughs> Did he invent them? Was everyone just laying their head down on a cinder block every night? <laughs> then he came along and said, imagine if that cinder block was just a little bit softer. <laughs> I mean, I'm 48. I think I bought a new pillow like twice in my life, but they're just flying out the door at my pillow because what, this guy seems well rested? He has the energy of a guy being dragged out of a Buffalo Wild Wings in Duluth for stuffing barbecue sauce in his pockets. And who are these researchers? Are they just a bunch of other middle-aged guys with mustaches and Midwest accents screaming back and forth at each other? Mike, you're never gonna believe what I found here. I hacked into the voting system and found a whole bunch of fraud. Great work, Paul. I'm still sifting through the mail ballots looking for signatures that don't match. How about you, Steve? I'm filling my head up with helium to keep it from deflating. I got that Trump disease. 
Anyway. This is a man who had his phone taken away by the FBI in a Hardee's drive through and he was an early and prominent backer of Kerry Lake, the pro-Trump candidate who is now leading the polls for Arizona governor. And in a deranged rant this week, Lindell even said that he and his team would be monitoring every vote across the country. I'm telling everyone out there, we are watching from every angle. We, there's people in every state, every county, every precinct. We have cyber guys watching this. We, I looked at a thing today, it was on my, my Twitter back from November of 2020, and they showed CNN 20,000 votes dropping right off of Donald Trump's total in real time. You guys, votes don't go in reverse. These are computer manipulation algorithms. So what I'm telling you is this election, it's all eyes, we have all the camera angles. We're watching from every angle. It's all eyes. We have all the camera angles. Somehow the my pillow guy has turned himself into Jigsaw. <laughs> Although I'm not sure I believe you when you say you have all eyes and all camera angles, since you know you don't even have a phone. But <laughs> if that's true, it's probably not a good idea to be publicly confessing that you've somehow hacked into voting machines when you're under active investigation by the FBI. First, they took his phone at a Hardee's drive-through. Next, they'll probably confiscate all his cameras while he's in line at a Carl's Jr. <laughs> I'm never gonna get that burger! <laughs> but I will say, I did enjoy his little impression of computer manipulation algorithms, whatever those are. Can we see that again? These are computer manipulation <laughs> algorithms. Does he think that's how you type? That's not how you type. That's how a 19th century English dandy chooses a candy from a silver platter. Ooh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. A Charleston chew. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> the GOP might be talking a lot about crime or inflation or culture war issues, but this is the beating heart of Trumpism in the modern Republican Party. They simply do not accept the legitimacy of elections they don't win. And if they gain power next week, they will absolutely use that power to rig future elections for Trump or any other Republican candidate. If they could, they would look at all the votes in an election against Donald Trump, take all the nays, and turn them into... All eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win them all! This has been A Closer Look! The midterm elections are coming up, so to make sure that you're good to vote in this election, visit our good friends at headcount.org to check your voter registration status or to register to vote.